My Seven Chakras, episode 198. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The seven chakras, swirling vortices of energy, positioned throughout our body, from the base of the spine to the crown of the head, for thousands of years. This ancient wisdom has been passed on from master to disciple. What are the functions of these energy centers? And could these chakras help you unlock your destiny and find your true purpose? Welcome to My 7 Chakras. And now, your host, Aditya Jai Kumar. What's up, Action Tribe? AJ here, founder and host of My 7 Chakras, the show where we dive deep into the ancient world to uncover nuggets of wisdom that will help you find your life's purpose. So if you have questions about the universe around you and the universe inside of you, then you are listening to the right show. But before getting right into the action, let's listen to today's iTunes review, which is written by CoolCat2772 from the US who writes, I love this podcast. Thank you for creating this. Just as they say, the teacher comes along when the student is ready. This came along At the perfect time. Action Tribe, we are receiving regular reviews from the US, but countries like the UK, Australia, India, and Canada, my current home, have a little catching up to do. So if you are from one of these countries and you're waiting for the right moment to send us your review, then let me tell you that the moment has arrived. Writing a review is super simple. If you're on your podcast app on your iPhone, just hit reviews and then hit write a review. You can also use this link to jump directly onto the iTunes review page. The link you need is my 7 forward slash review. That's my 7 forward slash review. You see, I really, really love reading all the reviews that I get. So make sure you take a minute or two to share your views because every review counts. And now I'm really excited, really stoked to bring you our featured guest for today, Heidi Bright. So Heidi, are you ready to inspire? I sure am. Thank you. Glad to be here. Awesome. <laughs> so Heidi Bright, author, speaker, blogger, editor, and wellness coach, is in radical remission from end-stage cancer. During 2009, specialists predicted Heidi would die within months from an aggressive soft tissue sarcoma. She has been free of evidence of disease since 2011 of August. And now she combines her journalism and theological background with fresh insights each Thursday on her Thriver Soup blog. So Heidi, thank you so much for joining me today. Great to be here. Great. So, you know, as, as you might uh, know, if you've listened to a couple of episodes of My Seven Chakras, uh, we start the interview only after we've gone through the inspiration session, which we do in the form of an inspirational quote. So my question to you is, what is your favorite inspirational quote and how do you apply that quote in your day-to-day life? My favorite inspirational quote is Psalm 23, and that's not an, a normal one, and I'll explain why. The the psalm, part of the psalm says, he restores my soul, he He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Back in 2009, I had a a nine-hour surgery. I did not know I had cancer going into the surgery. When, When I came out, I had a tube from my stomach out my nose, and it was very painful. I was in a lot of pain. I was in and out of consciousness all the time. And I felt like Ganesha, the the Hindu god who is the remover of obstacles, because that tube was removing obstacles from my digestive system. And that reminded me of the movie The Elephant Man, about a man who had Proteus Syndrome, and his his head kept growing and growing. And there was a powerful scene in that movie when he quoted this 23rd Psalm, and people realized he was human, not an animal. And I laid in that bed, and I I thought, I'm still a human being. I don't feel like one, but I am. And I walked through that valley of the shadow of death for two years, and I did find comfort in that psalm. So that's why it's important to me. Love that. Thanks a lot for sharing this quote with us. I will fear no evil for you are with me. I think this is a really powerful and empowering quote. Action Tribe, no matter what challenge you are going through right now, remember that you are not alone uh, because 
whether it's your friends, whether it's your community, or whether it's the entire universe, you always have somebody supporting you and guiding you. And with that, let's dive in. Heidi, what inspired you to write your book, Thriver Soup? Well, my friends watched me go from death's door to being free of evidence of highly aggressive end-stage cancer. They watched me go through two years of treatment and learn how to manage the treatment in a, in a really helpful way so that I suffered very little compared to other people who had the same type of treatments. So they suggested that I use my journalism background to write a book to help other people so that they would not suffer as much if they had to go through a debilitating disease. And that's how my book Thriver Soup was born. It's traditionally published. It's endorsed by a surgeon. It can contains more than 250 practical tips, and it's a number two bestseller. I know it's really helping people, AJ, in all areas of their lives. I talk about the emotional, the social, the mental, the spiritual, the physical, the nutritional, how to deal with the medical side of things. One woman said, as I opened Thriver Soup, I flipped over a few pages and stopped on page 79. Right there was the key to a much more successful and informative consult with the radiologist. And I just received another thank you card this past week about how the book is inspiring this person to live a better life and be healthier. Got it. Thanks a lot for sharing. So when did you first come to know that you had cancer? I had a what my doctor thought was a fire fibroid and it kept growing and growing and growing and there was only I was told at the time a 1 in 10,000 chance that it was cancer. So I did tai chi and thought I and took supplements and I thought I would just wait till menopause for the fibroid to go away, but it kept getting bigger and bigger and finally through a long process of not being able to get into to see a surgeon, I went to the emergency room and they said they did another ultrasound and they said Uh, This looks consistent with sarcoma. Well, I had never heard of that word before. I had no idea what they were talking about. And I thought, I don't Mm. have cancer. I I I maintain my weight. I eat organic food. I meditate an hour every day. I'm doing Tai Chi. I don't have cancer. Mm. (laughs) Well, I already had end-stage cancer at that point. So I learned that I needed to do some things to change other areas of my life. And I worked on changing my attitudes my behaviors, and making some major life choices. A major part of that was learning how to deal with my Mm -hmm. emotions because I didn't know how to do that that effectively. And I learned a process called the Map of Emotions from my therapist. And it's about experiencing the sensations of the emotions in the body without thinking about them, judging them, analyzing them, or making stories about Mm. them. So um, like if I am afraid about something, like, like a treatment that's coming up, the practice involves experiencing the sensation of fear in my body, which for me would be butterflies in my stomach. Just focus on that and don't think about what's making me afraid. And if I do that, it can move around in my body. It can get more intense. But after about 90 seconds, the sensation will Mm -hmm. lift. Now, if I start thinking again about what's making me afraid, then the butterfly I start up again and I start the practice over again. It's a practice. And there have been times when I've spent more than an hour just sitting with the sensations in my body coming and going. And then it really lifted and I felt much better and I didn't have to deal with that constant sensation anymore. It's very freeing. So uh, Heidi, what type of cancer did you have again? Could you tell us? It was called highly undifferentiated endometrial sarcoma. And I I've only heard yeah, you know, I've only heard of one other person in the world who had that. I've heard of two that have had something similar. Got it. So it's <laughs> definitely a very rare type of disease, right? Yeah. And they didn't really know what to do about it. I ended up getting treatments for something similar. Right, right. And they, they did about as well as they could. So why wasn't this detected earlier? What do the doctors have to say? Well the only way to detect it is to have a hysterectomy. And I was putting off the hysterectomy because I thought I just was having an infection and fibroids. But it, they, the current statistic is that one in 350 fibroids are a, is a uterine sarcoma. And there, there are five types of uterine sarcoma. So there are, there are a couple of thousand women who have a uterine sarcoma. Okay. So, so how did your cancer end up getting detected? What did you experience on that day? Well, I, ha- I went to the emergency room because the pain had gotten so bad. And they said, they did the ultrasound. They said, looks like it's consistent with sarcoma. You need to get this thing out. So they called in a surgeon and the next day I had the surgery and it was, it had spread all through my abdomen. I had almost lost my bladder. I lost six inches of my intestines. It was, 
It was bad. And then it had metastasized to my lungs. So I was in bad shape. So it was spreading, right? It had already spread by the time I had the surgery. Yeah, it was already stage four. So what was your initial reaction when you received your diagnosis? What was your feeling like? Well, since I had been in pain for so long and I was in the hospital and then still continuing in so much pain, all I could think about was trying to feel better enough to get out of the hospital and then deal with treatment. Um, it was mm-hmm. it was mostly fear and I didn't know how to manage it at the time because I didn't have, I had not worked with a therapist right. yet. So um it was a couple of months before the shock wore off. So I was really in a state of shock more than anything else because I had done everything right. Yeah, you, you mentioned that. And here I was being told I'm going to die. Yeah, you, you were doing Tai Chi and you were eating well. So in those departments, you were doing well. But it seems like you weren't managing your emotions that well. And that's why you had to learn how to use the emotions map. Is that correct? Yes. That was a very big part of my healing process, was learning how to manage my emotions so that I'd, I didn't repress mm. them, I wasn't overwhelmed by them anymore, so that I could manage them in a very healthy way. And that raised up healing energy in my body, mm-hmm. and that is part of what helped me heal. That wasn't all of it, but that was a lot of it. Got it. Learning, learning how to manage stress was big, too. So what do you do next after returning home from the doctor's place? Well, my sister helped me get appointments at the two big sarcoma centers in the United States so that I could see, because the, the local doctor mm-hmm. didn't know what to do. He, he found one small paragraph in some medical journal and it had the wrong type of chemo in it. So my sister got me these appointments and I, I had children, so I didn't want to leave my area to have chemo for a year or however long. So we ended up, after going to those two places, settling on a doctor about two hours away at a major sarcoma center. And uh, he treated me for a year and a half. And then when I needed hospital stay chemo, one of his former students was in the Cincinnati area. So I went to him for the hospital stay chemo. Got it. So obviously, you're going through a lot of emotions. And it's not just you, but it's your family as well. And you're asking these questions and you're having questions in your mind, uh, how do you go about turning this terror of the cancer diagnosis into a journey of hope with options that you have led so far? What was your plan of action? Well, my therapist is what taught me how to do this, to to experience the terror as it Mm -hmm. arose and allow allow it to be what it is without trying to manipulate it, judge it, make stories about it, just experience the sensations in my body. And as I did that, I found that my attitude would shift. It was like, you know, terror is not going to hurt me. It's uncomfortable, but it's not going to hurt me. I can allow that to be Mm -hmm. there. And then when it lifted, I felt better and I could go back to my healing work, which was a lot of different things I was doing. I was trying to, I used my journalism background to find every healing option that I could so that I could do all those healing practices And that helped me feel like I had at least a little bit of control over my life instead of being just thrown to the wolves. (laughs) Got it. So so you mentioned that your therapist really uh, helped you. Um, Was it a he or she? Just from my understanding. It was a woman. A woman. Okay. So she she, she gave you some recommendations. She supported you. And she uh, requested you to experience the terror as it arose and to really experience the sensations and not avoid it. Um, And like you mentioned, when when it lifted, when you actually experienced those sensations, it felt better so that you could go back to your healing work. So my question is, you know, one aspect is experiencing these sensations. Uh, How does somebody avoid having these sensations come back again and again and again, sort of in a cyclical pattern. They do. They do come back again and again and again. But if the person sits with the emotions, the sensations, then it will lift. Mm-hmm. It's the thinking that gets us in trouble. Got it. It's the thinking that causes us to have, it, it can go both ways. We can have the sensation and then have the thoughts about it. Or yeah. we can be thinking, oh my gosh, I've got a scan tomorrow. What, you know, Or I've got chemo tomorrow. I feel awful about that. I'm scared. And then go into the sensations and keep experiencing that over and over and over again until it lifts. Mm-hmm. And then when it lifts, it puts us in a place of peace or gratitude or joy. Or it could be nothingness or it could be uh, aloneness. These are what my therapist would call textures. So the emotion is the fear. And when the fear is addressed in a healthy way, 
it lifts into a texture. Got it. Does that make sense? It does. It does. Okay. Now, you also teach your readers how to go about reducing the impact of chemotherapy, correct? Yes. So, how does one go about doing that? I have a, a list of my top five tips in my book. I've got lots more. But some of the tips are, um, one thing that chemotherapy patients tend to have, it depends on the type of treatment, but generally, they have to, they have a precipitous drop in white blood cells okay. every chemo cycle. Then they get a Neupogen or Neulasta shot, which is any costs anywhere from three hundred dollars to $7,000 in the United States. And it's painful. It causes bone pain. Now, I was determined not to have to do that. So I used acupressure visualization, emotional freedom technique, and ate lots of carrots and mushrooms. And out of 42 chemotherapy treatments, I only needed the shot one time. So all these alternative complementary practices made a huge difference in my experience. That's just one tip. Another is when my mother was had, went through chemotherapy in the 1980s, she had had a terrible taste in her mouth. It was metallic. Mm-hmm. And the only thing she, she could stand to eat was lemon drops. Well, I didn't want to go on a lemon drop diet. Yeah. So I, I talked to people and I looked online and I found something called an oil pull, mm. which is done every morning um, before anything is put in the mouth. And I, I explain in the book how to do that process. And I, uh, one month I got just so tired of doing it every morning that I did. Boy, did I regret that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the taste in my mouth got so awful I could hardly stand to drink water. Then I went right back to it when the next cycle, when I when I could after the next cycle ended, and then I got my taste buds back. Um, and the the list goes on. There's so many tips in there that can help people. So for someone who's new to oil pulling, what exactly is oil pulling? I take I I think it's raw raw sunflower oil, and I swish it in my mouth for three minutes, and then I spit it out, rinse my mouth. Then I put another tablespoon of the oil in my mouth, swish for another three minutes, spit it out, do that one more time. Then I rinse my mouth with a little bit of baking soda and water, and then I'm done. Then I can start with whatever else I want to put in my mouth that day. Got it. I don't know what the, I don't know what the mechanism is. Some people say it detoxes. Yeah. I don't know that that's true, but I do know that it kept my taste buds feeling normal when I did it. Thanks for sharing that. Now, you mentioned that it's important for cancer survivors to adopt a healthier lifestyle and you yourself changed nearly every aspect of your life to sustain your health. What were some of the changes you made to your lifestyle? <laughs> everything. <laughs> everything changed. Okay. Uh, the way the, I was already on an organic diet, but I, I got really careful with everything I put in my mouth. I got rid of um, the sugar, I was, I did eat some sugar before then, but I got rid of it. I was careful to buy um, very healthy meats, grass-fed, organic, that type Thanks. of thing. We got a water filter put in the house uh, so that I could have clean, good drinking water, not just what came out of the tap. Um, that was the food department. I, I, I began doing, I was taught how to do Reiki. I did acupressure on my, myself. I did, uh, adopted a different different types of exercising so that I could rotate uh, depending on where I was at in my cycle. I worked on the map of emotions. I worked a lot with affirmations and working with my thought processes so that I didn't get depressed because I felt like that would make it, that would just be the end if I did that. And I changed my spiritual practice. One thing I really realized, AJ, is that in America anyway, most spiritual practices are based on what's going on in the mind. Mm -hmm. Like there's mindfulness meditation, there's contemplation on an image, all that kind of thing. There's um, prayer, there's um, the Hail Marys. I decided that what I needed was to be, to to have a body-centered spiritual practice. So I can explain that if you're interested. Yeah, sure. Please go ahead. Okay. The practice involves keeping the spine straight. Now, if you're sick and in bed, you can just keep your spine straight as straight as you can in bed. If you only want to sit in your easy chair because you feel sick, you can just keep your spine straight. Whatever position you're in, if your spine, spine is straight, put your palms up like they're in a receptive position. Ask for fears and doubts to be lifted. Ask for faith and trust to be filled in your 
mind and ask to be filled with divine healing energy. And then, then simply focus on sensations in the body for 10 minutes. So you're out of your head. You're in your body. You know, do I feel cool? Do I feel the pressure of the chair underneath me? That type of thing. And that raises up life force energy in the body. Doing that 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the evening is considered a minimum. And I learned this practice from a a group called the Circle of Friends with Bruno Glerning. He was a German spiritual teacher and healer. And he taught this method to people. And I learned how to do that in in a group setting. So that's the practice that I picked up because I needed to be body focused, not mind focused. And that was it's very healing for me. Got it. I love this uh, recommendation to be more body focused instead of solely being mind focused. And the focus, like you mentioned, on life force energy by raising your hands up, uh, obviously using your mind as well, but also focusing on the movement of chi, I'm guessing, all throughout your body so that there is uh, a flow of energy. And I'm like, uh, we learn in Qigong and Tai Chi that any sort of disease or illness is because of stagnant uh, energy which is not able to move. So since you have a background in Tai Chi, you clearly utilize that to have a more whole body spiritual experience. Is that correct? Yes. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. So, uh, so you said that you got really careful of what you put into your mouth. You got rid of sugar. You got a water filter to make sure you're getting clean, um, you know, drinking water, grass-fed meat, Reiki acupressure. You learned these exercises that would serve you. You worked on the map of emotions and you ensured that your thought processes were uh, aligned with what was serving you so that you didn't get into the spiral that could uh, that could affect you. So why did you get rid of sugar? I'm sure a lot of our listeners might be having this question. Sugar is kind of controversial among cancer patients and practitioners. But the, the what, when you get a PET scan, mm-hmm. if you ha- that what they do is they give you glucose in a... Some with some other things so that you have a radioactive response okay. in the body. So the, the the cancer tumor will gobble up that glucose and then it lights up on the scan. So clearly the cancer eats the sugar. Now cancer eats everything. But so eliminating sugar might not be as helpful as people would normally think as far as what the tumor will eat is concerned. However, sugar causes inflammation in the body. One out of six cancers is directly linked to chronic inflammation. So to me, getting rid of inflammation is really important. And that means cutting back on the sugar. Another thing that causes, I can go into inflammation if you want, or we can just leave it with that with the sugar. Oh yeah, you can go ahead. Okay. Uh, Chronic stress, when we're in chronic stress, situations, our body dumps chemicals into our bodies, that, that ru- into our blood that cause chronic inflammation. So it's really important to deal with our emotions as well to get the inflammation levels down. Inflammation levels can be checked in the blood with a blood draw, and you're looking for C-reactive protein. That's the name of the test. And the normal levels are between 1 and 4. And my level is... So I got my inflammation levels really far down. And I think that's a contributing factor to my health. Yes. Okay. So it also keeps me free of pain. <laughs> so, so that was a good sign that 0.4, right? The yes. fact that you got it all the way down. Got it. Now let's talk about your diet. What changes did you make to your diet? And how difficult was that change for you? It, was, it wasn't a big change because I was already part of a, a community supported ag agriculture program okay. where I got organic vegetables every week. Um, I, I didn't, I, I just cut out, I didn't eat a lot of processed foods, but I cut that out too. And I just started doing a lot more cooking and I added turmeric. Mm. That's, a, that's the leading anti-cancer spice. And I learned how to cook with turmeric. I learned to, how to cook properly with garlic. I started sprouting my beans and getting raw nuts and soaking them over lo- overnight in salt water and then rinsing and draining and then eating them that way. The, a big thing was learning 
how to sprout my beans because I eat sprouted beans almost every day. They're very nutritious. So why, why sprout them? It releases a lot of nutrients that are locked in otherwise. Soaking them overnight helps a little bit, but if you sprout them, it's like they just, they're just so much more valuable to eat. Got it. Now, you say that uh, cancer survivors must also avoid scams. What type of scams are we talking about here? Well, it's, it's uh, something that's tra- touted as helpful or curative for cancer. Well, if something cured cancer, I think everybody would really know about it by now. Mm. There are a lot of ideas out there that are um, sketchy. I have a list of things to look for and watch out for in my book, Thriver Soup, yeah. so that you can avoid scams. But the, it's not foolproof. I mean, st- stuff still comes up. Somebody wanted me to try a particular water product, and I, I was skeptical, but I tried it for a while. And then I decided I'm going to really try to find it, the answer to this. So I put the name of the product in the search box on mm. the internet, and I added the word scam. And I got a lot of results that said, this product is not a scam. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But when I got through about, ten, I think it was about 10 pages of search results, I found a chemist's website. Yeah. And it was loaded with valuable information about water scams. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, I talk about a couple of, I talk about one specific water scam in my book. And then I talk about, you know, here, here's how to avoid a scam. And there's lots of them. And... What, here's one tip. Look at the website. Does it have a hundred testimonials? Yeah. <laughs> if it does, it's probably not a good, good product because they're having to rely on testimonials instead of science or uh, some kind of study. Mm-hmm. You know, it's and ask your friends. You might have to ask a lot of friends. A lot of people told me to drink alkaline water or or to have an alkaline diet, well, after doing, after looking at the chemist's website and doing some more research, I discovered that the body, if I put alkaline water in my stomach, my body, my stomach is going to neutralize it because that's the job of the stomach. So it's, it's a waste of my money to try to drink alkaline water. Now, if somebody is drinking alkaline water and they really believe it's helping them, great, keep doing it. But to go out and spend thousands of dollars on an alkalizing machine, I don't think that's the best use of, of your money. I think you're better off focusing on a whole foods, plant-based diet. I think that would be a much more beneficial to a person. So there you go, Action Tribe. Keep your eyes and ears open uh, because obviously there are so many different products out there, but like we're learning, a simple Google search uh, is really going to help you out. Sometimes you know, products in general have an agenda, And if you keep searching, go to the second page, you might come across some research which might help you on your journey. But the goal and the objective is to keep your eyes and ears open and just be aware of some of the scams that might be out there. So this is really relevant information for, you know, someone who has recently been diagnosed with cancer. Uh, If you know somebody who has been diagnosed with cancer, because like we're learning, it's not, you know, someone's individual journey but it's 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 a journey that we go through together the family the community oh yeah uh, and and Heidi uh, I have a question for you as well I'm sure these changes would have been difficult for you if you were all alone right so talk to us about your support system a person or a group of people who helped or supported you along the way and how did they help well I had an online blog with Caring Bridge and that was really helpful because I, I would tell them um, you know, this is happening. Any ideas that can help? Or I'm doing this. Can you pray for me? And that was so helpful. And then I had all my friends around town who would, I would say, you know, I would call up a certain person who I knew did, was not working full time and say, can you drive me to the hospital? Or can you pick me up from the hospital? Can you take me to the pharmacy to get my medication? Mm-hmm. And somebody else who was a good cook, I'd say, can you cook a meal for us? for this particular time. So I I tried to spread around my needs so nobody felt overwhelmed, and that really worked well. And there's actually research, AJ, that says that cancer 
after patients who feel supported survive longer. And it's absolutely true because you know that you're being cared for and people want you to survive. And if you don't ask for help, they don't know what you need and they might get angry because you didn't ask for help (laughs) and they want Mm. to help. So I had to get out of my I'm afraid to ask for help place and know that they did want to help. And if I was, if I came with a specific request, I almost always got the help. And if I didn't, they told me they can't, can they help me later? So it was great. That's amazing. I think it's important to be open in terms of communication, right? Yes. Because like you mentioned, sometimes if you hesitate or if you don't ask, people want to help. And if they cannot help, that they just want that option to say no, or maybe later. But I think if you keep those communication channels open, uh, like you mentioned, when you have that care and support, people in general, whether they have or cancer or no, survive longer, right? Yes. You have a longer lifespan in general. So I think it's all about a combination of care and support and communication. Now, you've enjoyed radical remission since 2011, right? Yes. So what exactly does radical remission mean? It, for me, it means there's no evidence of disease and I am not on any type of treatment. It's not something that is normal. Um, doctors can't explain it because it's not the, the t- typical route of the disease. That's why they call it radical remission. Awesome. That's great news. Yes. It's Thanks wonderful. a lot for sharing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very fortunate. I'm very blessed. Beautiful. So for someone listening to the show right now who might have been recently diagnosed with cancer or whose friends or relatives have been diagnosed with cancer, what uh, message do you have for them? The main thing is that there are lots of options in addition to what the doctors offer. There is so much that we can do on our own to help our bodies heal. There's always hope. That's the most important thing. Thriver Soup has over 250 of these and if you buy the book or you buy the the ebook, it's all right at your fingertips. You can, it's like a, a buffet. You, you have a, a you want to try something, you can look it up and see what what I suggest about that, how it works for people, how it doesn't work, that kind of thing. So, Action Tribe, to access the show notes for today's episode, visit my 7 forward slash one nine eight. That's my 7 forward slash one nine eight. The brick walls are there for a reason. The brick walls are not there to keep us out. The brick walls are there to give us a chance to show how badly we want something. Now, this is an amazing quote by Randy Posh, Action Tribe. If there's a brick wall in your life right now, or if you feel that you've reached a point of stagnation, then remember that the brick wall is there in your life to help you. Think about your life challenge right now and remember that you are strong enough and that you're determined enough to either climb it or break it down. Because we're learning today that the brick wall is there to give you a chance to show how badly you really want it. So Heidi, talk to us about a time when you experienced a major life crisis or a challenge. How did you enter that situation? And then what steps did you take to overcome it? I had been through two years of chemotherapy. um, And then I had another tumor growing next to my heart. It was on my major pulmonary vein. The oncologist didn't think that it could be surgically removed because of the location. So I called the man who had done my my other lung surgery and said, can you get it out? He said, yes. So I had the surgery. And after the surgery, I went to my six-week checkup with a nurse practitioner. She said, I see this all the time. I've been doing this for decades. You need to get back on chemo. And I said, there's no more treatment options. She said, then you need to get your affairs in order, which was pretty much go home and die. (sighs) And, uh, I went back to my home, and I was depressed for a couple of days. And then I decided that whatever happens, I am going to still, I am going out doing everything I can to be healthy. I am not going silently into that dark night. So I picked myself back up. I worked with the fear and the sorrow and the absolute powerlessness that uh, of being told, you know, there's nothing more that can be done. So I worked with the man. And then I continued all my healing practices. Six weeks later, I went back for a scan, fully expecting my lungs to be full of cancer. And there was nothing. Mm. (laughs) And there has been nothing that they have found ever since. That's amazing. It is amazing. And I think part of that is just 
surrender. Surrender is what happens when we do everything we can to help ourselves and we let go of the attachment to the outcome. That's what I had to learn. And that's what I did. Now, it doesn't doesn't mean that any everybody who does that is going to have the same type of outcome because I... Uh, I know people who did everything and they still passed from cancer. But AJ, they healed their lives and healing their lives was more important than curing their bodies, in my opinion. And I think your listeners are interested in healing their lives. I think that's the most important thing. And that's what your show is about. How do we heal our lives? How do we make the most of what we've been handed? So thanks a lot for sharing. If you had to summarize that major life lesson that you were sharing through your story, what would that major life lesson be in just one sentence? There is genuine hope and there are always the options. So again, thanks a lot for sharing your story. You, you shared that you went through two years of chemo. Uh, and then you went through the process and then you had another tumor near your heart. And because it was so close by, the first doctor said that he couldn't do the operation. Uh, but then you consulted a second doctor who said that he could do it. And once that was complete, uh, somebody recommended to you that you would have to go through the chemo session once again. Uh, and at that point, you said that you, you just couldn't go through it. which meant well, they, There weren't any more because I had a rare disease. There was nothing more that medical mm. science could do. And the other thing is the tumor had okay, grown okay. from half an inch to two and a half inches in five weeks. So it was huge sitting on the, mm-hmm. that pulmonary vein. And I don't think the surgeon got clear margins. Right. So right. It, by all, I mean, the nurse practitioner was fully expecting me to pass very quickly. Got it. So that's why they said that you would have to just give up and die. And at that yeah. point, you made a decision that you wouldn't go out silently and that you would take action to transform your life, right? You you continued your healing practice. You made those changes to your diet uh, and your thought process in, in the way that you dealt with your emotions. And then after a few weeks, uh, you went back and they found nothing, right? Yes, yes. Uh, and, and I think uh, you made a very strong point here of not just focusing our life on healing our bodies, but to heal our life. Yes. Because the body is, is just a vehicle that we have right now and if we focus on healing our life then irrespective of whether our body uh, disintegrates or no that is if we you know die or not if we heal our life then we can continue that uh, journey in the next lifetime as well Uh, so I agree a lot of profound wisdom that you've shared with us right now thanks a lot for sharing Action Tribe we've almost come to the end of today's session of My 7 Chakras and I hope you've enjoyed it thus far. The purpose of having these conversations is for you to become aware of the magic that surrounds us and the magic that is within you. Our show is all about asking questions and learning but also about experimenting and taking action with a major focus on taking action. So my advice to you is don't focus on changing everything, just select one action that you are going to take. Whether it's taking action towards your energy levels, uh, your life force energy, your overall health, your finances, your relationships, or even your business. Just take one action, but make sure you don't wait too long to decide. Because as Lewis Carroll once so eloquently said, in the end, we only regret the chances we didn't take, relationships we were afraid to have, and the decisions we waited too long to make. So Heidi, what is your life calling as on today? To share my message about healing our attitudes, behaviors, and being able to make major life choices that we need to. Like you said, you know, don't regret not making that decision or making that choice. I agree with that. Thanks for sharing. Now, you know, all throughout your life, uh, you know, the actions that you took and the experience that you went through and the people that you made and the people that you met, was there ever a defining moment that really changed things for you? Throughout my whole life? Yes. Well, I guess the, the moment that I woke up in the hospital and knew that I had cancer, because that changed everything. I, just, I went into a dark night, and I was in the dark night for a long time, dark night of the soul, uh, reevaluating every aspect of my life. And in 2014, um, I received the Voices of Women Award for Outstanding Achievement in Personal Growth and Transformation because of all the changes I made after that diagnosis. It was a major turning point in my life. That's really inspiring. And, and with that, we've arrived at the last round for today. The Wisdom Round...
which is sort of like a rapid fire round which has four questions and the objective of this round is for our listeners to take note and to take action so heidi what is the best advice that someone has ever given you get to a therapist <laughs> <laughs> she taught me how to manage my emotions in a healthy way and that made that saved my life that was one of the things that saved my life name a personal habit that empowers you it's the map of emotions that she taught me and that's the practice of experiencing the sensations in my body without thinking about them until they lift got it so what is your morning routine like if i remember a dream i write it down I try to spend some time doing Reiki and the sitting practice that I talked about. I do some Qigong to loosen up my body. Then I drink a couple glasses of warm water and take a probiotic. Then I start cooking an apple. After 30 minutes, I eat that cooked apple. Then I start my, my Polera tea, which is a type of it's a tea blend that aids digestion. But when that gets gelatinous, I put it in my Vitamix with blanched kale and sprouted mung beans. I, I drink my smoothie, take my pills, my nutrients. And while I'm doing all that stuff, cooking, I'm also on my computer writing and answering questions about the cancer journey. Awesome. So name a book that you'd like to recommend for our listeners today. When I was diagnosed, um, a friend sent me a book and one I was in the, still in the hospital. And that book is the most dog-eared book I have ever owned. It's called Waking the Warrior Goddess by Dr. Christine Horner. She get, laid the groundwork for me to know how to to heal my life. So Action Tribe, I know how much you love our book recommendations and I know that many of you purchase these books as soon as you hear them shared on our show. And that's why Audible.com is offering Action Tribe one free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial so that you can get to check out their amazing service. Now, Audible has over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android or Kindle, including bestsellers like The Chakra System by Anadia Judith, Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramahansa Yoga and a new earth by Eckhart Tolle. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com forward slash MSC. Once again, that's audibletrial.com forward slash MSC for your free audiobook. So Heidi, thank you so much for joining us today. It was a real pleasure to interact with you and chat with you and ask these questions. And I'm sure that our listeners really appreciated your time as well. Before you go, tell us one thing that you're grateful for and tell us the best way we can find you. I am grateful to be alive. (laughs) (laughs) And my website is thriversoup.com, T-H-R-I-V-E-R. S-O-U-P dot com and you can sign up for my weekly blog. So we'll have the link up in the show notes. Heidi, thank you so much for coming on our show, sharing your journey with us, uh, talking to us about how it's important to change not only aspects of your life, but your entire lifestyle and taking us one step closer to a human revolution. You are listening to My 7 Chakras. Go to my S-E-V-E-N, chakras.com. Download your free gift, get inspired, and take action. Transform your life today.